Okay, uh, thanks uh, Ines and Finn for excellent presentations. I'll try to, to keep up. Um, and basically what I'm gonna present, so builds on, on what you have presented already, all right? So I'm gonna talk about uh, inequality and human development, all right? And this is so it's empirical work that we've done with uh, Carlos here and Vicente back in Barcelona, all right? And so what we're doing is basically use this amazing data that these guys are putting together to try to reassess so the connection between equality and human development, right? And, and the focus, as the subtitle says, is on the role of different parts of the income distribution, all right? Um, this is already a, 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 a wider working paper in case you guys want to take a look, all right? And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's still open for, for improvements. All right, so let me motivate uh, briefly. So two main trends that we can relate to, of course. So one is... Uh, uh, inequality and, and as Finn was suggesting, so the key is inequality within countries, right? So that's on the rise. You were suggesting that it's sort of either stable or on the right, but in, in many countries is is well the data suggests that it's on the rise, all right? And that's a major concern. Right? So uh, when we talk about inequality, it's not between countries anymore, it's mostly within countries, right? And and so in line with, with the project, the idea is to see, okay, but what exactly is happening when we talk about inequality, right? And one, one thing that I want to highlight here, also already highlighted, is, is the disproportional concentration of income at the very top, no? And this, this has been a uh, center of debate with key authors, Piketty and so on, so discussing this concentration of income at the top, right? That's one thing, and we connect this with the idea that development means more than pure economic growth, no? And Ines was telling us how at the beginning we were sort of focusing on, on economic growth, and now it's, uh, we, we started to, to look beyond, no? Education, health, and other development outcomes. Uh, and just to, to bring this out, elephant, serpent graph, I'm not gonna get into the, the technicalities of the shape here, but this is sort of, uh, so how, how basically what, what you were explaining. No? So when we look at what has happened in the last decades, so how it's basically the, the, the very rich who are really taking the big part of the pie. No? So um, this is globally. No? So uh, the, the global sort of poor have been on the rise a little bit because of the rise of the emerging countries, right? And you talked about, for instance, China and so forth. Then the middle sort of squid bottom in the USA, Western Europe, and this connects to political debates and those left behind and, and electing Trump, and that would be another sort of discussion if you want, right? And then the super rich, which are, are taking the big sort of share of income, all right? Um, and this is also from, so, I mean, this is, you can, of course, easily download from, from the internet, and this is so, uh, cross-country variation in, in this concentration of income at the, com, at the top. We can see it looking at the top 10, all right? And we see sort of the dispersion, I mean, the, the big variability across countries. I want to highlight Latin America, of course, uh, where we know inequality is really high, all right? And there has been a lot of discussion in this Congress about inequality in Colombia. But uh, also when we talk about uh, top incomes, right? Actually, I, I did a little bit, so you, you, you can play with this online, of course, and I took US, China, the world, and Colombia, and you see Colombia is like uh, champions up there, no? So, and this, and I selected this because these are countries, US is, I mean, it's of course, one of the countries that they started, so the data starting to show this, this concentration. Anyways, for, for the Colombian audience, fact that we here in Bogota, right? <laughs> But the same if we look at the, at the if we look at the top one percent, all right. So again, um, Latin America red red. So the top one is taking on all of these countries more than twenty percent of the total income. That's quite a lot. And again, uh, Colombia is at the top, like uh, um, in the ranking. So good. Anyway, so the, the aim of the study is. So having this motivation and this, this data in mind is to, to reassess this relationship between income inequality and human development, as I said already. And so what we do is to look at a large panel of countries. So we take, for the moment, we take a cross-country approach. We look at uh, close to 150 countries over the last decades, 1990 to 2019. As, uh, and as I was saying, so the idea is to explore the role of the different parts of, of, of the income distribution, basically the concentration at the bottom, the middle, or the top, all right? 
Um, some, I had some literature review, but Ines did such an amazing work. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what else I can add, but uh, just to go quickly. So we know that inequality can have impact on economic growth. And there is a mixed evidence here, so it could be positive. I could probably add that when we look at, so when we find a positive effect, this is usually because we're looking at the short run, all right? Uh, that's sort of one distinction that we can add. And when we, when we find a negative effect, it is usually the long run, no? And this relates also to the, to the channels. So these negative channels play a role in a more longer term, right? That's, that's a, an important distinction that I think we have to make. I'm not gonna say much about the mechanisms, you explained this very well. Uh, and you also said, we also know that, that this impact may depend on different characteristics. So like the level of development, Barro 2000 that you mentioned, but also the initial level of inequality. And here we know this has also been said, of course, is that some inequality is, is good, right? So if we have a low level of inequality, an increase in inequality may be actually be good news. It's when inequality is too high that, that the, the impact reverses, right? Um, it also depends on the type of inequality, right? This is something that we have to remember. And I mean, we had a nice sort of discussion yesterday. Uh, so whether it's market or a structural inequality or inequality of opportunities as put by Ferrara yesterday. And, and in, in a previous paper we show with, with my co-author, with Vicente, we show that, so the two things happen at the same time. You can actually capture the positive and the negative effect if you are able to disentangle the structural versus market inequality, right? I think that's also interesting. Um, and yeah, so beyond growth, we know that there is an impact on health and education outcomes. But as you said, the evidence here is more limited and there is more to be done, all right? And then uh, what, what we've been sort of exploring recently is how inequality connects to human development. We have already some evidence that high inequality lowers human development. The idea of this work was to explore that in more depth. And again, looking at different measures of inequality. Um, so yeah, that, I think that the potential contribution is to, to look not only at aggregate inequality indices, right? Like the Gini, which is, as you said, the traditional sort of way to go, um, but also to look at, at differences along the distribution of income, all right? And uh, to, as, as we say, no, to the best of my knowledge, there is no paper already doing that. So I think that's uh, the, the contribution here. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit about the data, but again, I mean, you already had sessions with the experts explaining the data, so not much to add here. Uh, when we look at the HDI, so for human development, we look at the HDI, and you know that this is basically income, education, and health, all right? And uh, just to show you that, of course, there is, I mean, a lot of cross-country variation, uh, and also over time, no? and that is the idea to explore this variation. In terms of inequality, we rely on, on you guys, on the, on the wheat, all right? And as I said, I'm not gonna say much about this because uh, it, it's already been explained. Uh, just to say that, so what we do is, again, is to use different measures, and, and basically for the moment, we've been focusing on the Gini to, to, to sort of try to reproduce previous results and then look at the bottom 40, the top 10, and the top one. And of course, implicit here is the, the middle, right? So again, along the income distribution. Um, I showed you graphs with the top 1% or the top 10%. I can also show you maps with the Gini index, just to show you that I can spend time doing maps. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and, uh, and let me show you so the association between inequality and HDI, all right? So if we do simple scatter plot or we do simple sort of growth section or OLS uh, sort of or long run associations, then we find this sort of negative um, association. No? So if we look at the Gini or also if we look at the top one, top 10, this is positive because here we're looking at the bottom 40, so you have to understand it the other way around, all right? So this is the idea that, that the so looking at a global sample of countries over time, you're gonna find this, this negative association between uh, inequality and HDI, all right? But we're gonna explore this in more depth, of course, using uh, regression analysis, right? Because that's why I studied econometrics and I teach econometrics, so I have to use econometrics. So uh, the, the functional form is pretty simple. So HDI, country I time T, and we regress that on on inequality measures, we try to have some, some lags here. 
we add some controls, and then so this is sort of pretty standard in the literature, and this is what so trying to reproduce what what other papers have done, changing of course. So previous papers look at growth here. So what we do is look at HDI, no? But again, we add to that, adding. So we add to that the distinction between different sort of um, um, parts of the of the distribution. So for instance, between the top and, and between the bottom and the top. All right. So uh, for so for the analysis, we use our global panel, five-year intervals, so a sort of more long-run association, and we control for a lot of variables, all right? And uh, let me guide you through the results. So this is the first sort of results. So uh, human development and inequality and using different indicators. So um, basically, uh, and this has, so this has, uh, so country fixed effects, time fixed effects, and then we play with the, with the controls, right? So this is sort of like uh, the empirical strategy. Now, as you see, in many cases, you don't find much. Um, and this is probably the idea that there is mixed evidence and it's not easy depending on what you do. Uh, but what, what I can say, so if you focus here, so we find a positive and significant association between Gini and income, and this is, so Forbes and other previous papers that said, okay, if you, if you use fixed effects, in a panel, you're probably going to find a positive association. No? And for, for some people, this is like, well, inequality is supposed to be bad. So, right? so I think what is interesting here is that we, we, we reproduce that, but then it disappears when we look at the concentration at the top. It's to say, OK, so maybe there is a positive effect of inequality, for instance, through savings or some of the mechanisms that Ines discussed, but not when we look at the top. So the top. So the concentration at the top is not associated with, with higher income, all right? And I think that's already an interesting finding. Um, second set of results, uh, this is then sort of, if you want, using the second equation here, is sort of um, adding the bottom 40 and the top 10, all right? And here, if you want, so, and then we look at different, so we look at the HDI, we look at income, we look at education, and we look at health, all right? And this is what we find. So higher concentration of income at both tails, all right? So at the expense of, of the middle, it's associated with a lower HDI. So I think that's also an interesting result is to say, okay, so, uh, it's, so concentration at the extremes, what seems to be lowering human development, all right? Um, and when we look at income, education, and health, we see that sort of the tracking is uh, education, so particularly with education, all right? And uh, this sort of supports some of the, of the still early findings on, on educational outcomes. How am I doing on time? Okay, all right, good. Um, for health, here we don't find much, all right? Now, uh, what we do is, so again, based on the literature, is to say, okay, let's look at let's look at levels of development. So let's uh, compare, for instance, high-income countries with low and middle-income countries. Uh, and again, we look at uh, HDI income, health, education, and health, and then HDI income, education, and health here, all right? Uh, and again, bottom 40 and top 10, all right? Or here, bottom 40 and top one. We play to with the concentration of income either at the 10% or at the 1%. Uh, now, so for low and middle-income countries. So we're going to start here. We find that the concentration of income at the top and bottom, so again, at the expense of the, of the middle, is negatively correlated with education, all right? So it seems that uh, in, in low and middle income countries, again, the story is about education. Um, now, when we look at high income countries, we find that the concent that high concentration of income at the top, all right, is significantly associated with lower health. And we found this as interesting because you mentioned that when, when they look at health outcomes, they don't, they don't find much. So here we find in something, and, and it sort of supports, so this is what we're trying to do now. So there is outside economics, there is literature that, that sort of discusses this, right? No? So inequality, especially when it's like, so I see what my neighbor has and all this, so this, this may impact health outcomes, all right? And we find this, this for high-income countries, so uh, we think uh, that it might be a story there, all right? Uh, now, so another 
exercise that we did here is to say, okay, so if part of the story is concentration of income at the top, there is a story about uh, institutional quality, right? So we thought, okay, is this, is this concentration of income on institutional quality? You also mentioned that there is an association between these two. So basically what we did was to, to use uh, data on sort of um, so proxies for institutional quality and we built two sort of measures. So one for political institutions and another one for socioeconomic conflict, all right? And see what happens when we control for institutions and we, we split countries by, by the quality of institutions. So uh, looking at countries with low quality institutions, so you, we know that it, this is usually countries with low level of development, um, and then all controlling for institutions, we find that, uh, so, so basically, Part of the story is, is institutional quality, but the results are still there, all right? So it may be that part of the effect uh, works through uh, institutions, all right? Um, but again, it's not all the story, all right? Um, so this, this would be if you want the, the sort of regressions. So basically, if you, if you compare this with, uh, with the previous table, so the coefficient goes down, so again, it seems that one mechanism could be lower institutional quality, but the, the result still there for, for inequality or for, in this case, the, the top 1%. So it means that it's not only lower institutional quality, it's something else which relates to concentration of income at the top. All right? And I think this is where we have to explore more. All right? uh, but again, you see, for instance, for the top 1%, we still have a negative coefficient. And in this case, so for HDI, also for income, although non significant, and for uh, education. Um, so we did more robustness checks, and this is so in case uh, so if you if you are yeah, interested in the econometrics behind. But I'm not going to spend much time here. So we use alternative series of human development, for instance, the augmented or the hybrid, right? And so for our period of analysis, which is the 1990-2019, our main results hold. All right. The only thing that we did was. Uh, sort of using alternative ways of introducing the role of the middle income groups. No? So remember that the story here is, is that this concentration at the extremes. All right, so we did, so following some previous papers also on the topic, we, for instance, used the Gini plus the, the, the third quartile or the middle 50, right? Sort of to capture the idea of the middle class or the median voter that, that Ines was mentioning, all right? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna conclude with this, so basically, uh, we reassess this inequality development relationship uh, to, to take from, from my presentation. So concentration of income uh, at the top, sorry, sorry, at the expense of the middle, if you want, is associated with lower HDI, especially for human capital accumulation and in developing countries and health in high income countries. All right. And of course, there are policy implications of this that we can, if you want, we can discuss. All right. Um, Further work, we want to do this at up to national level, different contexts and policy frameworks, and maybe come back with results next time we see each other, right? I still have one minute, right? And I'm going to, if you allow me, I'm going to save my last minute to do a little bit of uh, propaganda. <laughs> and it came to my mind, so this is a conference on, on development, and I just got a book out, which is called uh, Our Elusive Quest for Prosperity. And in this book, I did, I do a, so it's, it's, a, it's a short book on, on, the, on the history of economic thought, trying to, in a, in a very easy way, trying to, to so, um, go through the ideas on what it means to be prosperous or for us, development, how to understand it, and then sort of in an historical perspective, if any of you is interested, then uh, there it is. All right, it's in English, but also in Spanish, if you want to, to read in Spanish. Thank you. <laughs>